Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Let's begin our part 5 of our DP900 real exam question series. I strongly recommend you watching the earlier 4 parts. The link for the entire playlist is now available in the i button on the right corner and in the description box below. So let's begin. Let's begin part 5 with question number 51. The question asks, what is the benefit of hosting a database on an Azure SQL Managed Instance as compared to an Azure SQL Database? The important keywords here are Azure SQL Managed Instance. Considering this fact, if I look at the options very carefully, I can assure you the only closest answer for this question is the option B, which is native support for cross database queries and transactions. Moving on with the question number 52. The question asks that you have an e-commerce application that reads and writes data to an Azure SQL database. Which type of processing does this application uses? Does it use stream processing or batch processing, online analytical processing or online transaction processing? If you look at the question very carefully, it says e-commerce application. So what is an e-commerce application? It, it majorly either sells or buys or do something B2B or B2B, B2C style of transaction. So it's mostly a transactional uh, application. So thus, when we know that this is a transactional application, then the obvious choice that we are left with is OLTP or online transactional transaction processing. And that's our correct answer. Moving on with the question number 53. We have, you need to store data in Azure Blob storage for 10 years as per your company needs. The data is rarely accessed. Choose the storage tier best suited for this. Before answering to this question, I will take you to the Microsoft site. Now here in this site, you can see a description of hot tier, cold, cool tier and archive tier is given. So you can read through uh, this link. I will give that in the description box as well. Uh, however, let's look at this very quickly. So hot tier has a higher storage cost. Okay, so you have to consider the question might be asking you that you have to consider the cost. The cost should be optimum or the cost should be minimum. So in this case, always remember that the cost for the hot tier is the highest. Moving on with the cool tier, the cool tier is uh, optimized for storing data that is infrequently accessed or modified. So you need to store the data for a minimum of 30 days in cool tier. So remember this days limit uh, whenever you are given these kind of questions. Moving on with the archive. So archive is the cheapest of all. And it's basically used for the data which is rarely accessed. Okay, and you need to store the data with a minimum days of 180 days. With this understanding, let's come to our question again. If I try to answer this question and try to figure out what are the important keywords here, I can see the first important word is 10 years. So I need to store data which is huge and which is for 10 years. I don't want to access the data very frequently. It's very rarely accessed. Thus, it's not a hot kind of uh, storage that I need. It's not a cool storage. Definitely the answer is the archive storage. Moving on with our question number 54. This question gives, says you that you need to query a table. This question says you, you need to query a table Name products in Azure SQL database. Which three requirements must be met to query the table from internet? Okay, so we need to uh, suggest three options that we must adhere to so that we can query the table on the internet. Let's look at the option. The first option says you must be signed in as a reader role for the resource group uh, that contains the database. So this option is majorly related to resource group. However, we need to figure out something which is closely associated with 
Azure SQL database, you must have select access to the products table. Of course, because we are accessing the table which is named as product, this option looks to be true. So let's hold on to this option. Moving on with the option number C, you must have a user in database. If you have ever worked with the database, you know that this option is a must. So you must be having a user in the database before you can do anything. Like you don't, if you want to select something, you want to insert, update, anything, a user is a must. Let's look at the option number D. You must be assigned contributor role for the resource group that contains database. So basically we have reader roles, contributor roles, and these kind of roles are actually important to access resources inside the resource group. So this is not actually related to the database itself. Thus, let's look at the option number E. Your IP address must be allowed to connect to the database. Yes, so if you will ever, con uh, ever configure a database on Azure, and let's say you want to access the database using SSMS, or maybe you can also the in portal querying tool that Microsoft offers within the Azure portal, in any of the in any of the options you must need to configure your ip address right as a trusted uh, source where from where you want to access the database thus i can say that the answer for this question are b c and e okay i hope uh, the justification for the answer is clear to you so now let's move to the question number 55 so this question asks you when can you use azure resource manager template or mostly known as arm template to automate the creation of an interdependent group of azure resource in a repeatable way to apply azure policies for multi-tenant deployments or to provision azure subscription or the last one is to control which services and features administrators and developer can deploy from the Azure portal. Now, before answering this question, let me take you to the Azure portal. On this link, you can read in a good detail about the ARM template. So if you scroll down here, you can see that it says that infrastructure code becomes part of your project, just like application code. You store the infrastructure code in resource repository and version it. Anyone on your team can run the code and deploy similar environments. Okay, so now you understand why ARM template is used. They are used for deployments. Okay, now what are the good features or benefits of the ARM template? Just scroll down the same page. Keep coming down. You can see why choose ARM template. Now in this section, you can see there is a point given repeated will results, which means that using ARM template, when you deploy some resources, the results are very repetitive. So the results are very expected. You can, you always deploy with ARM template and you always expect same results to come with your deployment. Thus, the answer to our question here is also repetitive, which is the option number A to automate the creation of independent group of Azure resource in a repetitive way. Moving on, we have question number 56. In the question number 56, you are asked that you are deploying a software as a services SaaS application that requires relational database for online transaction processing or OLTP. Which are your service should you use to support the application? As we have discussed many times, whenever you see OLTP, right, then at that particular moment, only one option should click in your mind, which is Azure SQL database. So the correct answer for this question is Azure SQL database. See, Cosmos DB is not a OLTP database. HD Insight is more analytics and analysis. So this is also not OLTP. Then Synapse is more like a data warehouse. Earlier, actually, this uh, Azure Synapse uh, analytics was also known as Azure SQL data warehouse. 
so none of these like a b or d actually is a oltp only option that relates to oltp is azure sql database so make a connection in your mind oltp azure sql database i will show you another form of similar question uh, in the next question 57 in question number 57 uh, it asks that you have an e-commerce application that reads and writes data on an azure sql database which type of processing does application use is it a streaming processing batch processing online analytical processing or olap or online transaction processing or oltp right so now you see uh, we again have sql database so can you guess the answer already yes it is oltp so you see the connection here also it was oltp and then the correct answer was azure sql database and in this case we were given azure sql database and in the option we had oltp so i hope you can establish the connection in your mind when you give the examination let's move on to the question number 58 in the question number 58 is asked that what are the two benefit of platform as a service or pass relational database offering in azure such as azure sql database and good point to note is that you also get some you know learning also from these kind of questions so you can already know that azure sql database is a pass offering so always keep that in mind while answering the question because if you don't understand what service is what if the azure sql database is a pass or a ias or a sas then you will never be able to give a correct answer so please keep that in mind always when you are answering or attempting a question moving on so let's look at the options the options are access to the latest feature the second one is complete control over backup and restore processes in database machine learning services or the fourth option is reduce administrative effort for managing the server infrastructure so keep in mind you have to tell two benefits always choose the right number of answers because each answer contains one point then for which service we have to tell the benefits we have to tell the benefits for the past service such as azure sql database now if you look at the options again see past services are always maintained by the cloud provider so you don't have to maintain you use the you uh, use the past services right so the latest upgrades patches features these are mostly always done by the cloud provider so you don't have to uh, worry about those kind of uh, additional jobs okay so that is the that is one benefit of uh, pass services so if you will look at now access to the latest feature yes of course it does looks like an answer and the second answer is reduce administrative effort for managing the server infrastructure as i already told that in case of pass you don't have to build any virtual machines or you don't have to build any server infrastructure so that is also a benefit of a pass offering <coughs> Okay, so I hope this is uh, clear to you. Let's move to our question number 59. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. If you have already done that, thank you. So let's see our question number 59. The question says, which Azure Data Factory component initiates the execution of a pipeline? Data Factory in Azure is a serverless integration service it's fully managed and you can use it to build elt or etl so now looking at the options we have a control flow a trigger a parameter or an activity so which one of them triggers the execution of a pipeline the correct answer for this one is a trigger let me take you to the azure website to prove this answer so this one is a official web page of uh, azure data factory you can see that azure data factory is a fully managed serverless integration services and you can easily uh, build etl or elt processes without uh, any code okay so you will find a lot of uh, benefits of azure data factory here 
and you can read a lot how to set it up and how to do various things in Azure Data Factory. Then I will show you one more page. This page actually gives you information about pipeline executions and triggers in Azure Data Factory. If you will scroll down, you can see there are various ways of execution of a pipeline, one of which is manual execution. Scroll down a little, you will see we also have REST API execution, PowerShell, and then we also have trigger execution. If you read through, you will find that triggers are another way that you can use to execute a pipeline. And this is the proof of our answer. You can also find good information about triggers like how, what are the various ways of trigger, like uh, schedule trigger, what are uh, tumbling window trigger, what are event based trigger. So you can find a lot of information about data factory and how they can be executed. So it's a good page. I will strongly recommend come here and read through the ex uh, Azure data factory. Okay, so then we will move to our question number 60. Our question number 60 is a yes no type of question. It says that select yes if statement is true, otherwise select no. The statements given are Azure SQL database includes a fully managed backup service. The second option is Azure SQL database has a built-in high availability. And the third statement is Azure SQL database can use Azure Advanced Threat Protection or also known as ATP. The first uh, statement is true. So Azure uh, SQL database does offer a fully managed backup service. The second is also true because Azure 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 SQL database has a built-in of high availability. So that is also true. The third one is also true because Azure SQL database does have ATP. Let me take you to Azure websites to show all of these statements so that you are sure that these answers are valid. So this is so this is the Azure website where you can find more details on Azure SQL database. What are Azure SQL database? Coming down here, you can already see that Azure SQL database are fully managed. Okay. And you can see the Azure SQL database automates updates establish and backup so that you can focus on software development the keyword here is backup and this is exactly what our first statement was so fully managed backup service thus our answer is correct coming to the high availability let me show you the answer here as well you can see here in this part the part i have selected you can read through build in ai and build in high availability maintain the highest performance and durability with a service agreement of up to 99.995 percent so this proves that our second option the statement is also true coming back coming to the third option third statement we have does the azure has this atp let me take back to the azure page same page scroll down a little Keep scrolling and here you can find advanced data security. So here you can see that Azure also has advanced data security. Thus it proves that the third statement is also true. I hope you have understood and found the valid information related to these questions. I will provide all the links uh, that I referred to in this video in the description box so you can read them whenever you have ample time. This was our part 5 of our DP900 real exam question series. Today we learned about Azure Resource Manager or ARM templates, Data Factory, Pipeline. We also learned about Azure SQL Database, OLTP and Pass Offering. Hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I did. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.